Okay, so uh, first off, uh, thank you everyone for coming and listening to me. Uh, this is my, my first time speaking at the uh, Meetup, uh, actually conference at all. So uh, forgive me for any mistake I may made, <laughs> and I'm sure I made a lot of mistakes. So, so my name is Nawa Panmanu Siddhiphon, just call me Nawa. Uh, my handle on the internet for pretty much everything, GitHub, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter is Nawa Man. So today we talk about uh, making impossible state unrepresentable uh, with, with um, functional J.io. So I want to ask a little bit, people here, how many people uh, have moved on to something like Scala or Haskell, functional programming language, basically? And it all good or all well? Hmm? No. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. So, so, so here's my journey. Like, so I, I, I try to learn job, uh, Scala a lot. I think I'm, I get a hold on most of it. About two years ago, uh, my boss asked me to uh, modernize a project from Java Spring to Scala. So that when reality hit. So it's not just you know the language or you know the paradigms. There are libraries, the build framework, the uh, web framework, the whatever in there. So long story short, I didn't finish it on time. I take longer time than I want. And, and, it's, big, uh, and it's a single person project. So there's no backup, anything, just me alone with the dragon. Uh, so after that, I'm trying to really understand functional programming. And along the way, I wrote it into a library. And that is what functional J is. And it's different from other functional library for Java, is that I try to tackle things that are not there in other languages, the so unique features in there. So let's see. Today, I will present one of the features. Uh, which is called algebraic data type. We're going to put algebraic data type in Java. So let's see how that goes. And that will tie to making impossible state unrepresentable. So the topic will be circle, circle around data modeling. right? So there's an there's a important quote to say that all models are wrong. That's the whole point. Model is not trying to represent the whole thing. Try to represent something that is useful for us, for the context of the things that we want to deal with. So, so the focus is we are not trying to model everything. We only try to model things that in a way that useful for us. Right? So I'll go to data modeling. I'll go to the term making impossible state unrepresentable. Uh, and then move on to the functional programming solution for this, which is algebraic data type and how we how to might possibly implement it in Java. And then we'll move on to Functional J and how Functional J is doing AD, uh, ADT in Java. If you have time, we're going to do demo. So this is data modeling. May anyone have seen this? Similar to your factory, factory. <laughs> <laughs> so so basically, in OO, we 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 model everything as object, right? Everything is object. Uh, we're trying to give it the proper name that we have. We end up with something like entertainment provider, singleton, and and other things like that. So, so this is the kind of thing that we do when we model, right? So why do we model? As you already see, we're trying to create a, a mental models, well, the, the word models, with whatever the business is, right? And the context that we're trying to solve. So if we're trying to make POS application, like point of sale application, we're going to have to circle around, OK, who's, a, who's a, the store, what things are sold, who's the customer that buy. Right? We don't concern about something else. We don't concern about address of the, the customer. Like I never give address to a bar. Right? So like only pick something that is good and models, create a mental models for that business logic. And create common language between the team members. Right? So then when we talk about something, uh, we know what is it that we mean. Right? Sometimes we create models for persistent persons, map it with database. Right? That's very specific uh, reason. Or for transportation, like those that write a REST uh, service, we know that we can create models that for transportation only. So models are created for various different reasons. And then uh, in the past, uh, people have done raw data, like bytes completely, 
Uh, in some languages, they do strings, like JavaScript, it pretty much all strings. Everything is strings, right? And then uh, before object-oriented come around, we group things in struct, in union, and that's called uh, abstract data type or structural data type. And then when object come around, we have classes, we have interface, right? Things that, that help us models, either with logic or not, but models. And then functional programming, they branch out of uh, the same place with OOP, we branch out from structural programming. So they take abstract data type and chain into something called ab uh, algebra data type. Uh, and then there are other types, system going on, like protocol, or dependent type or whatever crazy things up there. Uh, <coughs> so, so what is making impossible state representable? It has its word, right? There are, th there are things in the system that we want to represent, right? And then the thing that we make it because of the, uh, the language allow us to, to create the instance of it basically, right? You think about class and you get instance of it. When you create that, sometimes the thing that you can create to the type, it's invalid in itself, right? Like if the type, you, if you said string and you don't want it to be now, but Java said string can be now, like that is a very simple example, right? So uh, that's a concept in functional programming that they're trying to do. Uh, it stems from the totalism idea. So let's say, what is it? We have a function, right? And function have input and output. Uh, basic, right? And then in functional programming, functions are pure. It's not looking up anything outside. It's not trying to do anything that have effect outside, right? So, and whatever input come in, they want to send out an output. Sound, sound basic, right? But sometimes that's not the case. So let's see example. Like, example, every time people talk about this is divide function. So when we have a divide, we have the dividend and we have the divisor. So what, what can go wrong? What, right, so if the divisor is zero, then you don't have the answer, right? Mathematically, anything divided by zero is not defined, it's undefined, not a number, whatever that is, right? So this function is not total because and some, some input doesn't, uh, doesn't result in a valid output, right? So in Java, this will throw an exception. So pretty much in Java, if it throw exception, the function is not total. If it double, it will throw uh, divided by zero exception. If it double with the, uh, oh, right, right. If it integer, I think you're right. I think you're right. The, the corner case that if it double, because there's not a number for double, you're right. OK, so my bad, my bad. We can try that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, so, so let's let's change to an in, and then we can go on. <laughs> Sorry about that. And, and how about this? How about this? If we get, you want to get the first element of the list, can it go wrong? It can go wrong, right? Because if the list is empty, then you will get what? Probably index out of bound, I think, right? So it's throw exception, and this one is pretty clear. Is defined right here. Right, so if I not found or couldn't read or file wasn't closed, but someone opened it, haven't closed, you can get a problem. So these are example of the functions that are not total, right? So from what I understand, uh, functional programming try to solve this problem first, right? So how do we make sure that all functions are total, even though intrinsically these are not intrinsically these are not total, right? So they come up with something like optional. Actually, it come up with something like maybe. Uh, it's the type called maybe, which is the same with optional. So if you write Java 8, you're familiar with this. So optional double. So if divisor is 0, you return empty. Uh, otherwise, you just divide. The same thing go with this and that, right? So, so the, the way they do it is that, OK, I cannot control the input unless I can create a type of non-zero double and then put it at the input. If I, w if I can do that, I, can, I will do. But if I cannot do it, then perhaps uh, I will constrain the output and say I may return a double, optional double, maybe double, maybe not double, right? The same thing here. If we have a type called non-empty list, perhaps we can do that. 
But if we don't, we can set it return optional string, right? Optional string for this case. The same go with this. This one, it, uh, in this case, we return an, a default, which is an empty list, right? If it's acceptable, if empty list is acceptable for our case, then we can do that. So I, it stems from this trying to make function total. Uh, uh, functional programming stamp up on the system, I guess. The system that allow type to be represent more flexible. Like in this case, something there, something not there. And it is sprung out of that uh, things, right? So, and it come out to be useful for data modeling as well. For example, if we want to have a contact, contact info, right? And then at this particular moment, my contact info is address, physical address, I mean, right? Email address and telephone, right? By the time I finish application, they want me want Twitter, they want Facebook, or whatever, right? So if I create type in this way, and my sub uh, downstream application assume that there can only be this kind of contact type, they may get into trouble in the future that I add Twitter or, or Facebook. So in other words, the type itself is not, uh, is not total. It's not, there can be possible invalid value to it, right? So if I have a, a, a program downstream to check if it address email or telephone and do something different, and all of a sudden get Twitter, then you, you, you'll be in a bad day for that, right? Uh, the same thing go to payment method. There are these payment methods. What if we have Bitcoin tomorrow, right? right? So our, we have to go all everything in our program to update that, right? So the type may end up in the unrepresentable and illegal state. And we want to find a way to make this, our data only allow representable state. So that is the goal, okay? Before I move on, is any, anybody has, has question related to this? Think, things okay? OK? <laughs> OK. <coughs> so customer uh, may have contact information, but they, we may spe want to specify we want at least one contact information. How do we do that? There's no way to identify here. Well, actually, that's a way. We can create a constructor to say if it's not, if it empty list, throw exception, right? Uh, that can be good or bad. Yeah. So it's come to uh, a functional solution to this is called algebraic data type. The term algebraic is referred to uh, things that can be operated together. There's operand and operator. So don't worry about that that much. But basically, algebraic data type is a system of type that allows us to create composite type, a combined type from a simpler type. Basically, that, that it is. And there are, generally, there are two ways of doing this right now. So it call, the first way called product type or called and type. And another way is called some type. So in and type, basically you said all the sub type that I have here, I require them all in order to create this type. Right? In order to create customer, I need an ID, I need a name, I need date of birth, and I need address. Keep in mind that none of these can be now. Unless specify none of these can be now, right? So I need all this in order to create customer. That's why they call it an type. Uh, and the reason why I call product type, product mean time, is that the possible number of each of this uh, time together will be possible number of that. Don't need to worry about it that much. It's just an, right? It's called the product type. You may be, this is exactly like class, basically, right? So the class, you specify fields, right? So this customer class have this field. So good news. Half of ADT, you guys already understand, right? Because it's already in Java. So another thing is some type. Some type is a little bit, uh, a little bit harder, a little bit uh, new, not harder, right? So in this case, payment method. So I can pay by cash. I can pay by credit card. If I pay by credit card, I need a credit card number. I need a name on card. I need expiry date. I need CCV number. I need all this to pay by credit card, right? I can pay by PayPal, I can give an email, right? Uh, I can pay by using credit, so I have to give the payable and, you know, as a company, I need to put into receivable account or something like that, right? So, uh, out of the top, 
payment method is one of these, right? Just one of these, right? So that's why I call an all type. Uh, if you can imagine, is you imagine enum, but the enum that allow payload. In this case, these are payload. Okay. Can anyone tell me what syntax is this? What language is this? Uh, no, actually, I, I borrowed this from Elm. Uh, Elm is very interesting language. It's a fully functional language in the sense that it pure, right? You cannot do anything, no side effect, pure, totally functional. But it doesn't have a complicated type system like Haskell has or Aries or Scala has. Scala is not pure. Right? But anyway, so uh, uh, that's why I, I like Elm. I, I model this based on Elm. So uh, before I go on, uh, any question based on this? If you have question, the best time to ask is now. But keep in mind that I, I have a little bit of hearing problems, so make it loud. <laughs> All right. OK. So even uh, if no, let, let's go on. OK. <laughs> uh, so let's make it all right. Uh, algebra data type is not perfect. There are cases where it doesn't do. But uh, it gets the be best bang for your buck by learning these two simple composition of type. You can cover so many other possible cases, uh, right? Uh, I have found a case where either it cannot do, or it can be done but kind of weird and easy to uh, difficult to use later on. Uh, but yes, most of the time uh, ADT can give you that, right? So that. That's something to get right off uh, at the beginning. So how do we do uh, ADT in Java? So I already said product type is very similar to class. So if you have this uh, product type, you can pretty much create this class in Java. Just add public whatever in, in there, right? So it's basically just that, right? Is it? No, <laughs> because, because ADT, you require all of them to be there. Not now, no now, no now in here, right? Right, so one of the way is create constructor that make sure that's the case. Actually, that's the only way, <laughs> the only way actually, either constructor or uh, static method, right? Factory method that do that. Um, <coughs> sorry. All right. So <laughs> Okay, and then uh, what if there's validation? What if uh, date of birth, like, uh, cannot be a hundred years? So, like, for example, right? Uh, we 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 have to find a, a a way to specify that somehow, and it, this have to be a, a data value. The data value by that I mean, if you have the same value, although a different object, it should compare, right? It should do equal. It should do hash code. Things should fit in there to string and stuff. I already said, uh, oh, oh no, it should be immutable. You cannot really nearly go change the value, right? And then that should be a reasonable way to, to modify it without uh, uh, change it outright of the place. So yes, it's sort of like a class, but in order to do that, you can do lots of things. Anyone here use Lombok? I guess a lot of people use. Lombok has a notation called value. That is almost, get it here. If you add wither, W-I-T-H-E-R, then you will also get this one, the bottom one. So you get this one, this one, this one. Uh, I don't think you get now check. I don't think you get validation. So Lombok will get you three out of these five, right? Uh, immutable, I'm not sure is a now check in there. I'm not sure. but if, Oh, right, right. You can add non now H is true, right? That's right. So in other words, there are some sort of solution there. And you kind of be able to imagine how to implement this in Java, right? I'll, I'll guess, right? Because it's very close. But some type is a little bit different. Uh, as I said, some type more like an enum sort of, but with payload. Unfortunately, 
enum only allow payload when the payload exists in all the choice. You cannot have payload for this one and not that one. You can't. You only have payload for all them or no payload. Right? So you cannot use enum. You can have interface and have subclasses, but you cannot, you cannot contain that. Only this thing can implement, right? If someone from Scala, you know seal trade. So seal trade is the way to implement uh, some type in Scala. And Scala 3, I think that's a there's a syntactic sugar for you to do that. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that is a way. Oh. Right. And I think it's go, we talk about that too. Uh, it, but it's going to be a while and it does some difference. So I'll talk about that a little bit. And then you can do, uh, in this case, uh, abstract class. And then you can set constructor to be package. So it, or you can only have subclass from within the package. So that's a way, that's a way to do it. So actually, that's how I do it as well. Um, and then, but there's a problem. Like, uh, uh, we, we, can, we can check exhaustion. We can enforce exhaustion by exhaustion. I mean, this class, uh, this type can only have this, uh, this choice, right? right? Uh, but but when, when we use it, how can we sure? That we cover everything. We, okay, we can only do with enum, right? When we do enum, if we do switch case for enum, and if we didn't cover everything, then compiler will tell us that you're not covering. I think it's warning, right? Uh, so, so there's no easy way to, to do ex exhaustion check there. Uh, the payload I already talked about. Um, and the way uh, uh, functional programming do does is uh, uh, pattern matching. So all of this is what I, I was attempting to solve two years ago uh, with Functional J. So Functional J, long story short, is a library that brings functional goodies. A lot of things that I, I learned, I try to bring it to Java. Well, bring it to Java. So the thing is that um, it helps you write functional style code. Uh, that's this thing which here is functional style because there is no way to enforce uh, purity in Java. Actually, there's a academic paper that was trying to do that. Uh, it was all and nobody, it doesn't become fruitful. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, it looked interesting, but didn't come, it, um, come out of that. But anyway, it's functional style, just like Scala. Whatever people, Scala people are trying to say, they are not pro, uh, functional language. They are functional style language because you can do side effect anywhere in the code you like, right? Uh, and then, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> and uh, uh, I try to decide it with Java in mind, right? Java has a lot of things that uh, we like it or not is there, right? So, so this, although we're trying to move it to functional, try to accept it. For example, we have function, but our function can throw exception. But deal with that. We have, a, you can call with an exception, we can call and you don't get exception, there's a different way to do that. So I, I encourage you to go to uh, functionalj.io and learn about it. The feature here, you click on it, there are some examples that you can go through. Uh, I haven't updated for a while, I've been busy. <laughs> uh, so, but, but you can go there, I made some video, um, some video or some blog posts. Uh, I encourage you to, to go there. Uh, there are things that I'm not talking about here as well. Um, Okay, where were we? And it's written in Java 8. Uh, and that means uh, you can use it for everything 8 and up. Because the, the previous company I worked with just uh, last year, they still use Java 7. <laughs> so I'm guessing that a lot of people still circle around 8, 9, right? So uh, if, if we can have 12 with switch case, then, then we will do. But I work with Java 8. That's a good thing. So here are some of the, I don't know why it's highlight there. Oh, I lost it. Here are some of the features that I have. Uh, I, I encourage uh, you to check out this one. Maybe that's why it's highlight. So lazy evaluated functional list and map. Uh, so it's lazy evaluated and it's right build. So you can map from the list basically, right? And it's lazy. You don't need to worry about it duplicate so many. You can create infinite lists and infinite map or whatever. In there? No. Um, 
spot. Uh, uh, it more like a it more like a stream. It more like a stream, but you can reuse it. You use stream Java eight, right? But it, it more like that. But it's a list. You can get element any element. You can add things into it. But it's a. Mm. Oh. Uh, yeah. Mm, yes, yes. We 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 can do that. Like I have a stream improvement that allow you create stream that if you ask for it, return zero, unless you specify something element five something else, otherwise return zero, uh, something like that. And we have functional types, a tuple resolve. This come up from what I need to to use. And definitely, what we talk about today. Uh, it's algebra data type, which is, uh, I call it just drag and choice uh, uh, to avoid name clashing with other things. You have rule types, uh, so validated types, basically. And, and, and other things, we try to do infinity injection with functions and other things. Some of them are experimental <laughs> in nature. Uh, some, some of them, I use it for my own company before, before I, I get a uh, uh, current job. Uh, so I encourage to, uh, to take a look. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to give me feedback or question. So let's get back to algebraic data type in functional J, right? So, so the product type I call it struct, and uh, some type I call it choice. So the way I do it is annotation. <laughs> what else, right? So we read annotation, we generate class. Uh, the thing is that I uh, functional J generate. Java class in Java code. So the good thing is that if you see it, it doesn't do what you want, or you want to add more things, you can just copy the code, put in your code, remove the annotation, do what you please with that. Or if you said functional J is no useless, I don't want to use it anymore, but I like what class generate. You can copy the code and use it as you want, right? So that's my intention. I was, yeah. <laughs> Annotation in Spring can be overkill, basically. <laughs> Let's say it that way, right? Right. So we have uh, annotation, struct, and choice. And struct, we have two form. The first form is you create an interface, and it can be internal uh, sub interface. Like you have a class, you can have a class called models, and then you can have this multiple of this in one. You define all your data in one place. <laughs> basically, you said what what fields you want as a function, and that's it. Or you can do a short form. So basically, is uh, you declare a method. Oh, can I get it, please? Uh, you declare method, and the parameters of the method become the fields. right? So this is useful if you have a few, a few of these. You can do it in one line, basically. And for choice type, uh, we have to do it as a long form, which is declare interface and notate it with choice, and each of the method become each choice. So basically, this is what you do in functional J. So let's go through quickly the list of this, and then I will try my best to demo them. <laughs> I'm not sure of the time. Anyway, so well, we generate Java code. We will talk about that compatible with Java 8, right? Uh, it have compact in full form. So you can choose to use it. It's data value. So you make sure it's immutable. It makes sure it's not now, unless you tell it that it be now. It do two string, it do equal, hash code, all those stuff for you automatically. Uh, it's immutable. It's, that's a way to easily modify it without actually changing in place. Uh, you can easily add uh, validation in it. Uh, reasonably well. Uh, and you can specify default value instead of now. Like you can say that uh, if you don't give me, I will default to that. Uh, it can be very useful. That's an exhaustive builder. So it's a builder that enforces you to put everything that is required. Right? Uh, I got bitten by this with DTO. They copy there. Someone add new class. We don't know about it. So that's why I add this. And that's lens. Automatically generated lens. Anybody here in uh, family with concept of lens? All right. I will try to uh, I'll try to sh explain and try to show uh, how it looks. Uh, and it it contain uh, uh, a map of fi 
feels in it, you can uh, intros, uh, retrospect, introspect it, right? You, know? Re you can inspect it, whether or not what feels there, something like that, and then you can easily convert it to map, right? For choice type, okay, generate to Java code as well. Uh, is, is data values or equal to a string hash map? Uh, it has some sort of pattern matching and it's exhaustive as well, although it's not as cool as other languages that have no deconstruction, but it's usable and it serves what I need. It's immutable, it has a way to uh, modify that's not in place. <laughs> it have now a default value, I'm not sure. It have lens and it can convert to map. So you can map it to JSON and, and whatever you want. So let's see the demo. What can go wrong, right? <laughs> what can go wrong? <laughs> so here it is. I'm still using a real IDE, by the way, Eclipse. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So I have here uh, a personnel, personnel type, right? And it said, I said it's struct. So because it's short form, I can just use the term personnel. And then I said, it's just used as a template. So it doesn't have to be public. It doesn't have to be struct uh, static because no one is going to access to it. It's just basically a template, right? So you said this is a struct and it have first name. It has a nullable middle name. It have last name. It has sorry in double, although it's not, not a good thing to do. It have date of birth. Uh, it has whether or not that person is on site or the remote uh, and the default is true. This is pretty much con convey what you want to do, right? That's the whole point. Uh, actually, that's the whole point. That's a good thing about functional programming is that you define your data as a do your domain, possibly in one place, place. If you have whatever class you want, you just declare it all here. You can look at this, and you have a good idea what this is all about, right? Uh, so uh, and here is a long form. So it's a struct, but I want to make it a long form. So I have a name and employees. And the reason why I may want to make it a long form is, this is one of the reasons, I want to add uh, a method into it. So in functional programming, you cannot add a method to it. You just have a function, right? So in a way, this is better. <laughs> this is better. <laughs> but anyway, this is, a, this is uh, an example way. Um, this is kind of ugly. But if you program Python, you can accept it. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why is this is that uh, uh, Java C, Oracle Java C, and Open JDK Java C doesn't allow you to specify generated class with the, the template of the class. And that by me because I was programmed in Eclipse. And it works because uh, uh, Eclipse uh, compiler let me do it, right? Uh, so maybe I should move to IntelliJ. Eh? <laughs> so, so, so basically, you need to do this, right? So you need to create this and unwrap it, and then you get this of this guy, basically, uh, uh, and do that. And you do whatever you want it. Oh, OK, this is an example of uh, how you do. So this is a fun functional list. Uh, this is functional list, right, fun list. So then you can map in there right away, right? Uh, and then you can do operate in there right away. And the result here is lazy. So, so you are not going to consume all the memory to generate this. right? So when you do some, it just go through one by one, lazy, does not consume memory. So that's what I mean by lazy evaluated functional list. So it lists which functional method, and it's lazy. right? And this is the example of lens. So this each person is the lens for person to go to salary. Um, as I said, people who are not familiar with lens, uh, if we go into a lens, we will not have enough time. But I will go to those people who are uh, familiar with lens uh, because it generates, right? And it's composable. So you can do something like that is zero. I don't know. I don't know what you want to do with it. It's that it basically composed, and then you, oh, so zero, zero. Something like that. Anyway, if you have a, if you have multiple nested data type, uh, lens can help you with this, and it reads pretty well, right? Map to double, 
uh, for each story and then sum them, right? It reads very well. So we, we, we can talk about that later. It's not the, the point of this, this, this talk, right? So then I create an object, a bunch of objects. I create personnel called John Smith. And then, you, as you can see, I give all of the required fields in here, right? John, now, because I have no middle name, family name. And this is called the, the full, full constructor. So you give everything that is, that is required there. OK, so this guy resolved in a class called <laughs> personnel in the same package. So you have to run this through some code generation. This one is generated. I can show you the class right now. If you click into, this is the generated class. It's ugly. I know, it's ugly. <laughs> generated class. Uh, and this is the constructor, constructor, right? So the first, last name, sorry. Uh, no, no, this is the full. This is the, the full constructor. And this is called the minimum constructor. So anything that can be opt out, either nullable or default, then you can opt out, right? So it doesn't have on site because on site default to true. And it doesn't have middle name, right? So you have choice. Again, it generates Java class. So you can go through this and help me find box. <laughs> A code generator box. No, actually, you can go through this and then see what you need, what you don't need, right? And then if you don't want to use functional J anymore, it's crap. You copy the code into your class and go on, right? Please, please say louder. Yes, that is a way to, to do. And I haven't used it that much, but uh, public constructor, you can have it false. And if you have it false, uh, then it will create the package so that you can create function to construct it, basically. So that's what it is. There are a number of uh, options there, uh, as, as you may pick. Uh, that is certain things that uh, generate all constructor, generate builder class, and mostly are default in, in, into. You can change the name as well if you don't like the name. It's not matched with the, uh, with the specification <coughs> here. You can change it as well. There are a number of things. We cannot go through them all. But you already see here, this is a full constructor, and this is the minimum. So minimal constructor, you can opt out the things that are nullable, right? So you don't need to put middle name. And you don't need to put uh, uh, on site, right? So I found that sometimes I need to add 20. That's bad smell, but that's nature for like data data transfer object. You have a lot, a lot of type, uh, a lot of fields, right? You can opt them out so you can have a reasonable uh, <coughs> constructor. Sorry. <coughs> okay. So or you can use this builder. So this builder go to everything. Right? Uh, if, I, if I comment out middle name, it still do because middle name is nullable, right? So default is now basically. But if you comment out last name, what happened? It doesn't let you. It said that uh, it, the, the class that without last name is, is, is doesn't have the salary, right? So at least uh, it helps you go through this. That's one caveat, though. In order to make implementation reasonable, this thing has to be in order. I actually write it not in order, <laughs> and it crashed my Eclipse, uh, <laughs> because it go like 10, you go 2 power 10. That is amount of you know, subclass that you need to generate. It's not, it's not worth it. So I make it, I make it uh, order. So kind of not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, that that's one time that I cannot build my because Eclipse just gave up, right? So uh, so that's why I have to go there, and then uh, okay. So things that and this is the example of using builder without the require. Sorry, without the optional fields, right? So you can see that. So now let's try. So uh, did I import that? Let me see. Maybe I didn't. Uh, maybe I can do this too. We are in Java anyway, right? So let's say we can do uh, John Smith. 
I think, I think, how can I? Uh, okay, so we can show uh, it's two string, right? We can show is hash code. We can show it. Uh, well, the best way to do it is to create another, another of this, and see if it has the same hash code. See if it has the same equal. Right, uh, and then equal John Smith. So let's run that. So as you can see, uh, automatically it creates hash code that followed by the value inside. All right, so if the value match, you get the same hash code, and it's uh, it's true if the value match, although it's different uh, uh, instant of an object. So this is what it means by data value. This is uh, uh, pretty uh, standard stuff. So let's see if we can change John Smith. Or oh, before we, that, we don't do that, we let's go to see John Smith. It said right here, final. <laughs> so you cannot change, right? And there's that's no method to do that. So if you can, if you have John's, uh -oh. John Smith, I can actually look at this one. Right? I don't know why I look at that. Uh, there's no set. There's no set in here. You cannot set anything, right? And if you said first name, so that we generate public field as well because I found that if it's final, yeah. um, it doesn't matter, right? And then, and then I found that when we use, uh, in the it can be used interchangeable with lens because lens is fields, right? The way I generate lens is fields. So we can use that. But if you want it to float your boat, you can use method, whatever you want. Uh, anyway, so that's only read out of that. That's no write. So that means by immutable. So what do it mean by modify without, without mutate? What does it mean? So this is what it means. So if you want to change the first name of this guy, right? He feel like John, it's simple. So let's change it uh, so we can say it with first name. So then we can change the first name. Right? There are a number of options. We can change it outright. So we can say, what, what is the full name of John? What is John? Is it John his nickname or something? Jonathan. Jonathan? No. Yeah. John, 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 right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I use Java 10, so uh, John. Right? Uh, so then you can, you can do that. Just to ensure that. Uh, just to ensure that we are not modifying anything, I'll print both of them. So as you can see, you still have the old Jonathan, uh, uh, sorry, John Smith, right? Because John, John Smith is right here, right? So it's not changing the object in place. It creates a new object with the change value. So that's what it means by modify without uh, mutate, right? This is, this is kind of, this is kind of uh, important because you don't want to run constructor <laughs> with copy constructor every single time, right? Uh, a, a, kid, a kid didn't die every time you do that. So, so, so we <laughs> that's why we provide uh, a with, and then you can do you can do with this way as well. So you can say uh, uh, so you can use it as a function. So then I can say the old name, right? And then I can have old name plus, uh, oh, we can do this right away, right? Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, ah. OK, run. So that will work, right? So, so there are. Uh, so there are, you can keep the value right out. You can keep a suppliers. You can keep a function. You can have by function. By function mean you get both the old name and the object itself if you kind of want to use other things in there, right? So you can generalize that the way you want it, right? Um, okay, so then how about validation? So let's come back here. And then what do I want? So let's say I don't want uh, salary to be negative. How can I do that? Right, let's say we cannot create uh, a personnel with negative salary. 
Uh, although the company would like that, but uh, I don't think <laughs> that would do. <laughs> That's number of ways. So the basic way is to change this to Boolean and then return false when it's invalid. So let's say salary uh, less than zero. Right? So then if we create one of these, and then we give, let's say, minus, so let's see what happened. Uh oh, what did it do wrong? Uh, oh no. Oh, oh, okay. So when we do this, we need to make it static, sorry. Because it's going to get called now. All right. Okay, so it said uh, initialization error, right? Uh, but this is not very useful. We, we don't know why, right? So you can change this. You can have it return string. And then if it's less than zero, we said negative salary and otherwise return now. So in this case, it will show negative salary uh, uh, validation exception with negative salary as a, a method. So that's a quick way to do it. And if you want, you can throw a validation exception and throw your own exception that implement that validation exception. That's another way of doing. Uh, I don't want to go further through that. Uh, what else? Now the default, you already see, right? Now here and defaults here. Um, I implement. Uh, I implement UUID and other things, default date as well. Uh, but I just filed back just right now that, that this today that I prepare. So I, I don't want to show that, it's embar embarrassed. But uh, that there are a number of things in there. Like if you go into this class, you can say it is required. You can, you can say I don't, I'm not specifying that. I don't know what it is. Don't even, oh, it, that, mean, that means not now. Uh, and then you can have it zero, and it work everything that is zero, right? Int, byte, short, whatever, right? And then it can be one, it can be minus one, it can be max value, it can be negative, positive, like there, not a number, fall true, empty, it work with string, it work with uh, array, it work with list, map, anything. Uh, space, it usually work for array, and there's random, the other things, just, just go take a look, that's now for the and time. <laughs> All right, so that is for this. And then exhaustive builder, we already show, show you that. This exhaustive builder, if we comment out one of them, it doesn't build, right? Uh, so that's a good thing. And then if we have that, I'm not sure it's static or not. Let's see, let's see. So get schema, yeah, I think it's static. Uh, personnel. What did it do wrong? Oh, no, no, I don't know how to type. Personal. OK. Oh, no, it's not static. So it's not static? OK, that's fine. We can do it with John Smith. Oh, uh, OK, we need to comment out this. Right, so uh, it show you that there are first fields and then it's string and it's not nullable. So you, you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, and then you can also change this. Yes? Can you make that like validation thing like return uh, optional or something like that? Or does it always go? Uh, it's your exception now. Uh, I have that thought as well. Maybe maybe I'll add it later. Thank you, thank you for suggesting that. Uh, I'll try to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, we can definitely do that. Like we generate the code, right? Is it up to the author of the static method, though? Because right now, that if I'm reading this right, you're, you're throwing that exception from the constructor. That's right, you that's can't right. You return something other than the type from the constructor. So you have to do it from the static method. That is right, that's right. So so that is a limitation to that and the, the Java. So, so forgive me. <laughs> so, and then you can do uh, to map to map, right, uh, here. So it changed this to a map. And then when you get a map, you can pass it on to JSON, Jackson, whatever, uh, to, to change it to J JSON. 
Um, actually, I'm actually working on uh, another feature. You can annotate this with at am, and it will generate am code with all the decoder because I need I need those. So that's why I did that. It's the only satisfying one. So we create uh, M type and decoder and encoder for that as well. So I think I got it working, but I, I couldn't have it run today. I don't know why. Maybe Eclipse uh, annotation processor. I don't know. Uh, just blame someone else. <laughs> Yes, yes. So, oh no, for collection you mean like functional list and stuff? Yeah, something, yeah, exactly. Con converting a <laughs> So, so here's this. Uh, because we want the object to be standalone on itself, so we need to do a uh, defensive copy. Oh, sorry, functional list is always immutable. Yeah. In, so it's not, what, what so you have to make a copy every time you when you do it here. A, a type like personnel where the middle name was a list. Right. That's right. Um, then the constructor would accept, say, a list of strings. I would don't remember that, but uh, uh, but but if you use functional lists, yeah. uh, it will guarantee to be the immutable one. Okay. That's yeah. Right. So so that uh, but that's functional list because the way it's done lazily, so you may end up with the non non. Now I don't remember how do I implement it, but. Uh, because I never find the problems, though I may need to take a look at it, but good, good to bring that up. I'll, I'll check it tonight, probably. Uh, but yes, yes, this one is, if you see here, every time I do a with, it creates a new object. Because it wants to make sure that the object stands on itself, right? I was tempted to say, link to the parents and chain one thing. And it got to a lot of problems, like especially garbage collector, it lie around forever. And I don't want to do that, right? So. This is good. Hmm? Could you add a few builder and then modify things and then build? Okay, so the builder is different. Yeah. If you want to see builder is uh, okay, ready for this? This is the builder. <laughs> <laughs> so basically you create a bunch of interface. And the interface is functional interface. Right? Uh, for the one with the default value, you have that default value here, so you can skip. But because it's functional interface, you just implement it with lambda. So give, give, me, give me first name, I just return this guy. No, but if you take an immutable value and convert it into a builder, mm -hmm. that lets you update the value. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. Right, right. I haven't done that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Good point as well. Good point as well. The builder's order specific, right? So if you change the first name, uh, you have to do with middle name. That uh, I, I attempt to solve it with lens, yeah. but I haven't get to the point where you can change multiple yeah. things just yet. So uh, lens is a big topic, so I don't want to go into that. I only show you the cool and shiny part of that, which is here, right? This is a uh, solder lens. Uh, anyway. <laughs> right, I, I, wa I want to. <laughs> OK, so let's see an example of uh, a choice type. right? Uh, I, I didn't have much time to create a elaborate example of that. So I already have this thing lying around as, as I build, build this thing. So you can see here. So you, you can see that there is a maybe, because it has to be specified as an interface. So unfortunately, you have to specify, sorry, suffix it with something. Uh, the accepted one is spec and model. And the other day, I was thinking that maybe I should add type as another possible suffix as well. Yeah, anyway, so you just said this. So maybe it's just data and nothing. Someone asked something? OK, uh, another caveat that I just, uh, that I just uh, remember is choice type allow generic, but uh, struct, I didn't get around to do generic for it yet. And the problem is lens cost problem. Um, I will try to do it at some point, but generic only support for try type for now. So you can have generic, and you can say just data here, right? And then the way you use it. Uh, okay, let's let's go in there. Let's go in there. So this is example of a generated 
uh, choice type. So as I said, it's abstract class, right? And then its constructor is private. So only the class that can implement is in here. So I create class that extend maybe. So it's a seal, it's a seal hierarchy of some sort, right? And this allow me to be sure that it exhausts it, right? And then, and then I have a elaborate structure to make sure you can do switch, aka pattern matching, and 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 be exhaustive to that, similar to builder. So it has to be in an order as well, <laughs> it, it, right? So so we will see that example a little later. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so this is basically is maybe dot just. So it's a constructor, right? But because uh, I generally do uh, static import, so I just do just like this, right? And just and nothing. So if you run this, uh, uh, okay. Oh, we only this, this line. So you run this, you see just five, and you see nothing, as you may expect, uh, right? So I create uh, either you can have left and right, right? And there's validation in this. Oh, I, I delete it at some point. Uh, I don't think it worked. I think I implemented. I was trying this today. Uh, so when when I change it, uh, it take a while to to do that, and sometimes it gets stuck. What you need to do is just this. Uh, because, because there are already file there, and sometimes the annotation process does it. I see the file there. What do you mean by generated? Uh, the annotation processing is really tricky with those. Yeah, but I found that about 80% it worked uh, at a change, but about 20% I need to, to clean the type. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, try is another thing, but uh, uh, functional J has result, uh, which pretty much do, do that, right? Um, and then there's link list, you can create link list. I think this, uh, uh, yeah, so I, di I didn't do generic to this, but you can do it if you want. I create three, uh, there's a login status, a good example, right? You can be logged in, that you have username. And why is now, maybe you have guests, uh, right? Maybe you have guests, which is now actually, you can add guest class, that's another way, right? And then you have log in. And you can have request resolve. You do a request. You may get a success. You may get error. You may get connection fail. Error means it's connection successfully, but it fails somewhere, right? 400 basically. Oh, sorry, 500. Uh, that sort of stuff. You can have a, a service that can only accept this command, right? Mm -hmm. So I, the robot can only go forward, backward, rotate, or explode, right? Can I cannot do anything else, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's useful. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can have something like this. Uh, 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 you need a measure. So you can have temperature with uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit. So with built-in two method. Uh, method, two Fahrenheit and two Celsius. So let's see some example. So you can create three, and when you run it, you see three node with value two and left for the left and left, uh, um, leaf for the right. And then here, the response, you can say response success. We return string full, cool. And you, you can match it. If it's success, you just get the length out of it. You don't care about it itself. You just get the length, right? And then otherwise, you don't care about any other choice. You just all else. Give me zero. Or if you want, you can go on and say, uh, if it's error, then I want to do things with the error. You can do that as well. It have to return the same the same type of value though. <coughs> That's a caveat. And again, it's ordered. And then uh, Fahrenheit. You can add seven to Fahrenheit, but I don't understand Fahrenheit, so I convert it to Celsius, and I get to the Celsius. <laughs> All right. So so I'm not sure about the time, but uh, this is this is what I prepare. I uh, as I said. It's a lot of them in there. And, and I found a lot of use, especially for lens. Lens is a topic in itself. Uh, and uh, I, I used to work in the bank, at the bank, right? Um, and I end up, after I quit that job, together, I, I found that if I go back to do it, use lens, it helped tremendously. The code looked much nicer. Unfortunately, I can't show you <laughs> because uh, I use it in my own company uh, uh, with uh, my employees, or I want to show you this code. But uh, 
I encourage you to go through that and see example and, and, and let that. Or if you know, have no slot for speaker, I can talk about that next time. Depends. Uh, all right. So that is the demo. Uh, oh, I forgot to change this. So thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. So as I said, uh, I, uh, please try to use it. Give me feedback. See corner case or whatever embarrassing things in there. <laughs> I, I found sometimes just wrong spelling, like all right. So um, uh, yeah, whatever. Give me feedback. I really appreciate it. Uh, 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 pull request is good as well. <laughs> <laughs> Any question at all? Uh, either about ADT or, or you start working on about two years ago. Uh, I, I start when I was assigned to convert that Scala program because the, um, that, that's a, uh, the pr principal, architect, uh, principal architect. They, he wanted to put Scala in, in the bank and they, nobody wanted to go there. And then he go to resume, and I sort of said I write because I write it uh, for other reason, mostly compiler. So I said I write Scala. So he said, okay, pull you in during this conversion, and it hit me that I don't know play, I don't know SBT, and then it, you know those sort of stuff really killing me. So I was thinking that there are definitely people who want to go functional, but they can't afford to go Scala even there's no want to help them, love them. So that's why I start writing this. I learn whatever I learn in functional, I start writing this. Uh, so it take me two years to this to this point. Yeah. Is this the most popular functional library in Java? Uh, it have 26 stars in, yeah. so I don't say it's most. <laughs> 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 okay, so so here's the thing. When when I when I first named it, I just didn't think much about it. Yeah. I named it functional J. Yeah. So, but when they start want to promote it, found that they're already a library <laughs> called Functional J, oh. and people abandoned it about eight years ago. Oh. So that's why every time I talk about it, I have to say dot .io. <laughs> so then, <laughs> because I don't want to go change. Uh, so you can go to uh, functionalj.io uh, to learn more, or functionalj uh, in GitHub. Uh, not this one. Uh, let's go here. Uh, Functional J said there's 26 star. <laughs> One of them is mine. <laughs> 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 and you can learn more. There's some documentation in there. Uh, I try my best to do. There's some video in there. It's not very good, but yeah, that's just. I I I, I encourage you to try on. Uh, give me feedback about anyway. Appreciate. What are your things about roadmap items in the future? The roadmap item. Uh, um, since I was working at the bank, I um, become interested in data analytic, uh, although I hate statistic when I was in college. So right now, I'm trying to make it so that it can be used for analytic, maybe move on to data science later, so that's what I'm working on right now. And whenever I found something useful, I just port back to this. So that's, uh, that's my current project. Yeah. And uh, I try to finish the Elm thing because I want to write a uh, web app that interact with this easily. If anybody write Elm will know that you have to create the coder. Uh, no, not yet. But uh, the, the, I think I have Elm code generated here. Let me, it generate in the root um, here. So let's see example. So this, so this example, we have user, right? So this is data type. And there's an encoder, a decoder. And uh, there's encoder, decoder for list of it as well. Um, so list of user, list of that. Um, so basically, you can convert back and forth to JSON. And then when it comes to choice type, it uses tag as a field. So we look at a tag and see what choice it is. You can rename it. You can rename it to something else, uh, but I use tag as a default. So it can do decoder and, and encoder as well. And because the way annotation processor can be configured, I cannot make it anywhere else but the root project. So like in this case, it's a root project instead of local. Um, I'm not sure how to solve this yet, but when we have it here, we can set um, to you know, take this code. Uh, not, no big deal. 
right? So I, I don't have examples just to answer your question, but uh, uh, I, will, I will write it, I think, uh, sometime in the future. Yeah. All right. Anything else?